Um, my name is Moshe. Thank you guys uh, for joining us. Uh, this is the first uh, event for this Cloud Security Alliance Israeli chapter uh, for this, uh, for this 20, uh, 2021 year. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, the reason I'm uh, holding my words and I'm uh, thinking a bit is because we plan to do this event in uh, Hebrew. But uh, due to the fact that we have several guests uh, from abroad, so we are now tr transitioning to English. Um, so I hope this is okay from everyone so we can accommodate everyone. Uh, I will uh, have um, all of our speakers do a, a control a shift and change a language. Um, uh, so um, restarting everything and uh, letting people join in. Uh, so my name is Moshe Ferber. Those, those of you who don't know me, I'm managing the local chapter for the uh, Israel. Uh, for the Cloud Security Alliance, the Israeli chapter. And this is the first event that we are having for 2021. And it's going to be an excellent event. On the first phase, we're going to have Oz Avenstein. He is a long time veteran for cloud security, participated in many CSA research and is a, a, a work with the largest enterprises on cloud security. And he will be talking about a research that we made here in the Israeli chapter about API gateways connectivity with uh, third parties and how to secure it. A scenario that is relevant to every organization, I think in the next couple of years, everybody will be doing B2B um, and B2C with API. So uh, this research document is basically relevant to all of you. And on the second part, I will do a panel with the guys from uh, Gardicor, Sharon Besser and Ran Chaim. Also, uh, security veterans, one of the uh, most interesting uh, startups in Israel, and uh, and they are uh, security professionals that you, re you really want to listen to. And we're going to talk about a uh, network software-based isolation or a, a zero trust and all of the new technologies that we currently have in the new data center. So uh, without further ado, uh, I think I gave enough time to everyone to uh, hop in. Uh, Oz, thank you for uh, joining us. Thank uh, you. Thank you guys for having me. Okay. Uh, so you're going to be first. Just let me thank everybody who participated for this. Uh, Stav from Istra Cloud, he worked hard for uh, making this happen. Uh, so thank you, Stav. Thank you more for doing this. Uh, and thank you all for participating. Ariel will join me later on in the panel and Sharon and Aran, so I will thank them uh, uh, later on. And last, uh, and last uh, comment, you can write questions either in the general chat room or in the Q&A. Uh, during the first conversation with us, we're gonna catch the questions at the end and uh, answer them at the end of the presentation. And during the panel, we're gonna uh, catch them as we go. So feel free uh, to chat with us. Um, okay, Oz, the floor is yours. Good luck. Thank you. So just a second, let me have my setup. So hopefully you guys can see my screen. So thanks a lot for having me. Thanks Moshe and thanks Gardico team uh, for organizing the event for us. Uh, it's been quite a while since I did a Cloud Security Alliance event, and uh, this time we're going to talk about our new research, which is actually a document that helps uh, security architects, CISO, security engineers, uh, IT security professionals in the implementation of a secure API, but also connecting externally to third parties. Uh, the document is a little bit more broad, uh, but today we'll speak specifically, specifically about security controls for exposing API. So I myself, uh, my name is Oz, and uh, this is part of what I do. I work as a freelancer, so this is only two hats that I'm wearing. I'm doing all the application security for Fiverr and a lot of application and cloud security for Isracard. I have a couple of more customers that I'm work with, uh, working with uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, CSSP, CSSK, member of CSA and of OASP Israel. So what we will have today, uh, we'll start off with a short outline of the document. The document itself is going to be published, uh, I think, Moshe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in about a month. Uh, it is going now through peer review uh, from the global uh, CSA team. Yeah, uh, it will be published as peer review in the next week, I think. Awesome. And uh, I'll speak shortly about OASP API security, the top 10 that they provided. 
Uh, and then I'll go a little bit about how we do risk evaluation in our document, uh, which, is a, which is a part of it. And then I'll go to how to protect an API uh, and the correspondence to OWASP API security. So uh, document that we are going to be published was created by us, the Cloud Security Alliance Israeli chapter, uh, with a bunch of participants that helped a lot uh, during the document creation. It revolves around security guidelines for providing and consuming KPIs. We also have uh, some appendixes that are related to how to interconnect API uh, to an internal system. For example, uh, it is aimed for security architects, software architects, DevSec, also security engineers, uh, IT security professionals, and of course, CISOs. Uh, it essentially provides some checklists as uh, you will see here. I will not show the document, but uh, a lot of the items that we have in the document will be here in the presentation itself. Uh, we have a short uh, uh, risk evaluation uh, questionnaire there and the checklists, as I just mentioned. So top 10 API security, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, was published in 2019, I think. Uh, basically has 10 items uh, with the first is broken level authorization. Uh, everything related to access to specific object that might be uh, broken, uh, broken user authentication, which discusses the whole authentication mechanism that might be uh, broken, and then uh, APIs might be maliciously abused. Uh, excessive data exposure is exactly how it's, it, uh, it is pronounced. Uh, lack of resources and rate limiting. Uh, so essentially, if we don't have any rate limiting mechanisms, so uh, somebody can, can abuse that. Uh, broken function level authorization aims on functions as a whole and uh, the ability to actually uh, call functions that we are not allowed to call. Uh, everything that is uh, around uh, roles and permissions and not a direct object access. Uh, mass assignment in cases we have some values that we are shipping as parameters uh, to the API. So someone might abuse that and insert lots of values or unknown values in order to uh, perform mass assignment, security misconfigurations, uh, injections, whether these are SQL injections or any other thing uh, that can hurt our API, improper assets management, which is relating to staging environments and exposed assets that we forgot of, maybe API endpoints that we forgot of that are still described on the client side but uh, are not uh, fully available anymore on our site itself. Uh, insufficient logging and monitoring, everything that is related to continuous monitoring and essentially detection and response. So I'm gonna go shortly of our risk evaluation and how we do that. So we created this piece in the document so we will be able to first prioritize what are the APIs that we want to handle Okay, if we have a bunch of APIs that we are examining to the risk and we want to apply controls on these, so we need to have some risk evaluation in order to have some priority. And additionally, we want to understand the risk level so we can then decide whether we need to implement all of the controls because we have quite a bunch or maybe some things can be a little bit more loose because there's always a lack of time. So we're doing this evaluation based on uh, a set of questions. Uh, I have a sample of these in a second, but we have much more in the document itself. Uh, the questions are around how to connect the API or the third party connection. And uh, answers are scored with one to five and the score is of course then calculated for us to have the risk score. Although answers are not always accurate, uh, but uh, they are sufficient. We want to do a risk evaluation. We don't want to do a full risk assessment here and to understand exactly what is the magnitude of damage, et cetera. We just want to uh, get just like a broad view of the, of the risk in order for us to prioritize and uh, know what controls to implement. So these are just some examples of the questions that we have in the document itself. What is the type of the API? So for example, if it's a private B2B API, so I will score it one because it doesn't have a high risk, but if it's a publicly available API, I will score it five. An existing API, if it's something that's existing, I will risk it one. And if it's new, I'll probably risk, uh, uh, score it five. And I have here, uh, for example, integration frequency. 
uh, sensitivity of data, what is the type of data, and we're giving uh, some kind of score, and also volume of data is also something which is relevant when we're exposing an API. So we answered all the questions. We have scores for each question based on our answers. Now we can calculate the overall score and we can just match it here. Uh, when we have the score, of course, we can prioritize and understand how to the implementation will be. And I gave here an example. Uh, if an API that is exporting customer profiles, there might be the overall score would be quite high based on our bar. If it's just search capabilities, probably medium. And if just checking if the service is up, so probably a score is lower. So protecting an API. Uh, so what we try to do with the document is essentially uh, provide a checklist for security personnel to have so they can really create comprehensive protection around the exposure of APIs. And when I'm saying comprehensive, we try and touch different layers or different subjects, as you can see it, or different pillars. So we want to touch, first of all, the design phase. We want to touch the code and the build itself. We want to protect our network layer as well. We want to provide a security controls for everything that is around authentication and authorization. And of course, we want to have monitoring and testing. So in our document, we really try to attack uh, API security and exposure of a service from every angle. So the document is true for when you are exposing an API to a third party that is connecting, for example, a third party service, but it's also true if, you, if the API is just like part of your site design and it's a customer, uh, an end user that is navigating to the API itself. So it's, it's pretty much uh, a broad and comprehensive. So it's just like uh, fits in with all design patterns. So these are the organizational entities that we will need to work with in order to have our controls in place. So of course we are, uh, probably most of you guys are just security and uh, the responsibility is on us, but we need to work with our peers in order to achieve that. Uh, actually, most of the controls that we have in our document is something that should be performed by one of our peers and one of these entities and not by us. And we should be in the supervision role uh, as we are mostly are serving as an architecture, an architecture function uh, in an API exposure project. So our entities are first of all, the platform team, which is responsible for our API gateway or platform services. Uh, the use case that I'm showing here uh, is something common that we uh, have seen and based the document on it. It might be that if your organization have a different model and uh, the teams, the development teams are divided differently. So it might be just a team that is responsible for everything uh, that relates to authentication, authorization, etc. cetera. Uh, specifically the document itself, when we designed it, we worked on a platform which is much more broad and we have a team which is a specific platform team, but it essentially can be every development team that is responsible for everything that relates to authentication, authorization, exposure, uh, externally, etc. cetera. Uh, the service owner. So the service owner is the actual development team that is now developing this new API or revamping an old service. So this is, uh, usually uh, the team that we need to work with a lot in order to understand the threats, uh, as we will see uh, in short. DevOps. So DevOps are responsible for a bunch of stuff, as we already know, uh, whether it's the WAF, whether it's our di digital uh, safe that we have, our digital vault, uh, the network, maybe the CDN, if we have a CDN, uh, maybe the WAF is integrated in the CDA, the CDN, and of course the CI/CD that we will want to integrate some tools into the CI/CD in an utopic world. Uh, as we will show it, uh, we will want tools to be integrated in the CI/CD as well. And of course we have us uh, that we have lots of on our shoulders, but not enough uh, resources, mostly, and uh, not enough uh, authority to 
make the changes that we want to do. So we will have to work with our peers appropriately. If you guys are sending questions because I see uh, some stuff are popping, uh, I'll answer these at the end because I'm, uh, we're kind of short on time. So this is the common pattern that we will want to work on. So I have these third parties, the end user, the subsidiary, or a third party service that want to access an API that I'm about to expose via my API gateway. Uh, there might be there's a CDN here or next to the web, maybe it's integrated together, but this is essentially my trust boundary. This is my organization and everything after here, I don't trust. We have here our entities, the platform team, which is close to the API gateway because it's responsible for it. Uh, we have our code management platform, we have a CI CD tools here, and we have the other three entities, which is service owner, security, and DevOps. So the first thing I want to discuss is items that are related to our platform team. So the platform team should, of course, have everything that is related to, uh, oops, to authentication. So authentication uh, should be implemented and a mechanism based on best practices should be on the gateway level, or it should be a separate service that is providing the authentication itself. Decoupling authorization. So authorization should be separated from the service. I need to have a service for auto authenticating a user and then a service for every action. Maybe can serve as a wrapper that is checking the authorization to, the, to access this specific API, right? I also want to uh, use the least, pri less, least privilege principle. I want to grant the bare minimum permissions that uh, are needed. Uh, in order to access. So I don't want the API key that I'm providing to be too excessive or to provide access to other APIs. I really need to know that the key that I'm providing or the secret I'm providing is giving the least privilege. Account lockdown. So every account that is unused or performing unsuccessful authentication systematically or any other malicious actions that have been performed by a specific account, we need to lock it. Session termination. Every inactive token or key should be terminated if it is unactive. We should really check that because sometimes tokens are left behind and then attackers are somehow grabbing their, their, grabbing their uh, hold on these and they can abuse these. Complete mediation for those of you who are not familiar with the term. So it is essentially validate the authorization uh, for every object access. So it's not that I'm authorizing a specific secret or specific API key uh, or entity to access uh, after it's authenticated. I need to really validate authorization as close to the object every time it is accessed. This is also something that might fall not only for the platform team, but also for the service owner itself. Request rate limiting, so everything that is related to excessive usage of the API itself should be blocked. This is something that can also be implemented on the DevOps level, okay? Uh, there is some negotiation probably between the DevOps and the platform uh, where this responsibility falls, but it can essentially uh, be in both sides. Token strength. So generating a strong token that is not prone to manipulation, cracking, or guessing. Specifically, if you have JWT tokens, these are prone to a lot of attacks uh, and are highly used now. So take note, we are explicitly routing, uh, writing about it in our document, it will be presented. And in cases our API utilizes authentication by cookies, which is not that common, but still might happen. So we want to have CSR protection, right? Because if I have cookies, then I'm prone to CSRF. So these are the controls that they have here next to the platform team. And uh, we have a bunch more in our document, uh, but these are the most critical ones that I enumerated here in the presentation. I'll go now for DevOps related items. So the DevOps is actually responsible for probably the CDN, the WAF, and everything that is exposed externally, right? So I need a TLS valid certificate on the service in order to, uh, for the user to be able to authenticate 
the service appropriately, the user or the third party. Uh, TLS, uh, strong cipher suits, I really want to cancel the support for uh, all cipher suits and for deprecated cipher suits. This is something that is very common and you guys are probably familiar with. Source IP limitation. This is a, a, a method for us to uh, some sort of uh, authenticate on the network level, the third parties that are accessing us, right? If I know of a third party or a subsidiary of my company that wants to access a, a certain API, I can limit this API to specific IP ranges. Closed exposed interfaces, of course, don't leave any open ports uh, that might be exploited. Update servers and packages, so every installed library and third-party software should be updated to the latest. Denial of service protection, so everything uh, that we expose is, of course, prone to a denial of service attack. This can be both in the network level in the, and in the application level. So we really need mechanisms for both. In the network level, it can be the CDN. Uh, in the applicative, uh, applicative level, it might be our WEF or our API protection tool. Uh, digital Vault, every secret, every key, every token, and every certificate that we are using should be stored in a digital key vault. This is a part of our responsibility, but is also uh, a DevOps and, of course, uh, the developer's responsibility. Right? We will also have a compensating control for this one, uh, but this is uh, quite often horizontal control because we need to validate it is done. DevOps are the ones that are usually responsible for the key vault, and the developers need to request a key vault hive uh, every time that they are utilizing some secret key or token. So the compensated control is having a secret scanning. This is something that we want to integrate into the CI itself, right? We want that everything that is built and shipped to our production will be scanned for secrets. There are some nice open source tools in order to do that. I just need to configure these appropriately. Uh, HTTP access logs. So in case where I have some incident, I will really want the HTTP access logs for digital forensics and incident response. So this is relating directly to continuous monitoring. And protect testing and staging environments. Probably already uh, everybody knows that uh, testing and staging environments are quite dangerous that may have uh, some misconfigurations and may have some underlying vulnerabilities, uh, which is arising from either old software or exposed inter interfaces and such. So these controls are attached here to DevOps and provide us with this checklist that they can use as well. I'll go now to the service owner items. So the development team that is developing now this new API or are revamping an old one or an old service that is about to be exposed. So of course need to uh, update packages, everything uh, that they are uh, using, whether it's packages that are developed internally or external packages, we really need to validate that there are no uh, vulnerabilities residing there. Uh, safe package usage mean that if you're using a third party package and open source packages, you need to validate that there are no vulnerabilities, but also use common packages and not these small packages that nobody knows about and nobody scanned and nobody is familiar with. Uh, list privilege also here, grant the bare minimum of needed permissions. Also try and understand like there is some a gap between the platform team and the, the service owner. So also the service owner itself, the development team itself need to take note that they need to provide the bare minimum of permissions when somebody is accessing their service or the API that they're exposing. Outputs in sanitization. So this is directly relates to OASP. So everything that um, uh, around excessive data exposure, exposure. So I really want to understand what data is returned from my API and to remove any unnecessary data that is re returned by my API. Error handling, so of course return generic error when are not, uh, which are not informational to attackers that they can uh, then abuse if they're performing some sort of attack. And of course, threat modeling in early stages of design, you should produce a document that has 
uh, enumeration of the threats that are relating to the service and appropriate controls for each of the threats, whether the control exists or not, you should attach a control uh, to it. Uh, secure code review, this is something that uh, we would want to have in our team. Uh, if we're really uh, security minded in the organization, already performed some sort of a shift left. So we would want our developers and the team leader uh, in this specific team to have some security minded code review. If not, we can, of course, use our security team in order to do that. And of course, as always in everything that relates to application security, always validate input that is coming from the customer or from the third party. Never, never trust anything that is coming uh, externally to our uh, services or APIs. So I attached uh, this check checklist as well next to uh, the DevOps. And now I'll go to the security team items. So the security team items is essentially, first of all, be involved in threat modeling. Uh, if you have a broad security team or if you have a narrow security team who still want to be involved in as much as DRs as possible and to be in these design reviews in order to perform threat modeling uh, with the team for, they, for them to understand the threats and for us to under, understand the threats and to create some mapping. Uh, integration of security solution. This can be uh, the, the implementation and configuration of a WAF. And I'm highlighting configuration because most WAFs are not configured appropriately. Denial of service mitigation, static analysis tools, uh, dynamic analysis tools, and also now API security tools, uh, which are quite helpful in everything that is around API security protection. Uh, continuous monitoring. So we want to monitor the API for security issues as well as predefined scenarios. Maybe I'm pulling this information from my API security tool and from the WAF and I have some consolidated security oriented uh, monitoring solutions such as a SIM or such as uh, I don't know, a Kibana with, with an appropriate uh, dashboards, but I should create some scenarios uh, which are predefined that I want to continuously monitor for these and to get the data from other sources. Having appropriate response procedures in place, uh, which is of course highly important. I saw organizations that having uh, an attack against uh, one of their APIs and then really don't know what to do and their hands up. So it's pretty much important to plan uh, this prior to an incident that happens. And of course, eventually performing penetration testing on the newly exposed API. So I attached the list here, but also I added the controls uh, to the architecture. So we really want SAS integrated into code management. And we really want the dust integrated into our CI CD and to test every build. Uh, that we're creating secret scanning can also be integrated to the CI uh, pipe. API security tool can be integrated to our API security API uh, gateway, and we want security monitoring, of course, on the WAF and the API gateway. So try to run it uh, quickly. I just want to show quickly the correspondence to OWASP. So essentially, we have a bunch of controls that fit in with any of the OWASP threats. We actually have a lot more of this mapping in our document, uh, where the controls are numbered and then uh, shown in a table to the correspondence to OWASP top 10. Uh, so I, I won't go to each one because we are short of time, uh, but essentially that's it. So thanks a lot for your time. And uh, please panel, tell me if I have time for some questions or you wanna go ahead. I let uh, people gather in their thoughts and uh, we have uh, one minute or two for questions. In the meanwhile, I wanna ask you a question. In your drawing, I see a, a web application firewall in front of the API gateways. Mm -hmm. Is that like a regular web application firewall? Can I find anyone in the market or it should be a one that is capable of translating API requests? So uh, it's, it's essentially can be any web application firewall. Uh, most of the organizations today are going with their CDNs, as we see the highly uh, online oriented organizations. Uh, you can achieve a certain degree of security over APIs using a WAF, but I do recommend going uh, for API security tools, which are much more comprehensive and much more focused around API security specifically. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to uh, even extend that and say that a WAF doesn't fit every organization. Uh, there might be organizations that are highly microservices oriented. So then if you have the WAF over here, like in the front line and you're tweaking it a lot and, and you are configuring it to be like highly strict, so it might break your services. So you want to maybe create a WAF for specific microservices and bound these together. So you just take the WAF or a bunch of WAFs a little bit back and put the WAF on specific microservices before uh, requests are reaching these. Uh, so it doesn't fit anyone, uh, but it does fit in cases that you are providing a lot more security in other layers of the design and your WAF is just controls for specific use cases and is not really strict and might break, the, break your application. Okay. And the second question, uh, I, I, you mentioned the code review and I was like under the impression that Code review is dead. We are now doing uh, static analysis and nobody is opening uh, uh, the, the code itself because it's, first of all, it's, it's manual work and it's too slow. So what do you think about that? Uh, I think that if we have development teams that are working internally in their team as a full stack team, or uh, maybe if they're not, not even full stack teams, but highly dependent teams, Uh, should should perform this shift left and should have a certain degree of uh, security oriented code review I think that SAS platforms are great but they are producing lots of noise and it's an a never-ending uh, process to tweak these and to get get uh, uh, only true positives if it ever happens from these platforms so I think it's highly important to still keep some manual code review. Uh, security minded of course in the team itself and as part of shift left just training developers to uh, check their, their uh, colleagues code for, for specific issues like t- teach the team leader to check for specific issues then uh, I think it can have uh, lots of benefit Perfect. in terms of security mm-hmm. okay so re- recapping this um, this was a, a research document created by the Israeli chapter it is currently being processed by the cloud security alliance on the way to become an official a cloud security alliance document I think it will be out as a peer review next week we will uh, circle around the link uh, for mm-hmm. anybody who wants to uh, review it and of course the uh, Uh, in the next month it will be published uh, after the preview it will be published uh, as an official document so thank you all for all of this you're welcome to stay with us thank you guys I am staying yeah thank perfect. you thanks for the time hope the presentation was good perfect